Kier Tefano. So here we are at Oliver MMA's gym here in New Lynn, Auckland. How are you doing? Yeah, good. Thanks, bro. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's good to see you. So, I heard so much about you. I just had to come and see it for myself. I just uh, don't know if it was real or not, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're real, bro. We're real. We're just, uh, just doing our thing down here. The boys just come in early, you know, around 9 o'clock most days and just do a bit of weights and uh, a bit of fitness and then we'll kick off the uh, technical stuff at night. Yeah, so just getting back into the routine, man. It's been a... Uh, Good couple of weeks, you know, pretend uh, COVID doesn't exist and get out of Auckland and, uh, you know, just it's been great, man. So uh, we're back into it and, you know, really fired up for a, for a big year. It's going to be a big one. It's, uh, it's all really, uh, you know, come to this point where uh, we'll see what they got and, yeah, it's going to be interesting. I think so too. I think so too, and uh, it's it's awesome to see you know um, hearing your stories. You will say fala português porque você morava in in Brazil now. Mm. Fala só em pouco agora não fala muito entendeu porque porque minha mora aqui mas uh, atrás eu falei bem é muito mas agora não precisa. <laughs> sem problemas, sem problemas. Yeah. It's awesome. It's just really cool. It's really, really got me by surprise. Usually I'm the one that does it, but uh, here he is getting me by surprise. Yeah, just a gringo, man. Just a gringo. <laughs> so, um, yeah, t I mean, tell me more about this whole situation that you're in with, uh, you know, they're, they're trying to slap you with $12,000 a day. Mm. I mean, is, is, is that what COVID costs a day to repair? Or is that like, where, where, where do they get that figure from? I mean, this is just absurd. Yeah, I don't know, man. They just pulled it out of the sky. I don't, uh, you know, it's just we, <clears throat> you know, financially, to be honest, we uh, pretty tight spot, you know. So I just said to my wife, you know, uh, like I said in, in, in previous interviews, this, this is not my business. This is my dad's. I'm just carrying on a legacy, and this is foundational principles we, we, we're talking about. There's just no. Uh, no discrimination and no bullying, you know, and it's just uh, unbelievable that our government, and, and, and we've been, you know, the social warriors, uh, warriors have been preaching this for, you know, 10, 15 years about no bullying and, you know, supporting each other and, uh, you know, anti-suicide and suicide support and all, this, and all of a sudden they've just thrown in a scrap heap and it's okay to stand over people and threaten their way of life and their, their, their you know, their income to take a to, to take a product that uh, is, there's no proof that it even works, and you know you can still ch you can still transmit it, you can still catch it, but you've got to take it for the safety of the community. It's just doesn't add up, doesn't make sense, and um, I just felt like potentially the business was uh, a goner anyway. You know, uh, if these lockdowns continue, we can't keep up. You know, it's not realistic that we can keep going like this. So I just said to my wife, well, if we're going to go out, you know, I'm going to go out standing on my morals and, and uh, you know, just on our foundational principles, which my, I know my dad would support. My mum just passed away a couple of weeks ago and uh, she was 100% on board that we, uh, you know, just provide a service for the community. And at the moment, the community's, uh, uh, you know, in need and uh, we're just going to do what we do. And if we go out standing on our on our morals as we go out with our head up, you know. Mm. I love that, I love that, uh, as you said, because either way, it's, it's, most businesses are going down and what's, what, what's the point going down if you're not going to do it without a fight, right? I mean, yeah. someone like yourself would know that. Well, what am I going to do? I'm going to go out, uh, I'm going to bend over and I'm going to uh, compromise my, my ethics and my morals and I'm going to go out anyway. Well, I just, uh, you know, at least I want to keep my morals and, and uh, it is what it is, but um, yeah, it's just an unfortunate situation, you know. Hundred percent, and uh, just remind me of uh, one of my most favourite people of all time, Bruce Lee. This someone asked him one day, uh, you know, why why do you um, you talk about peace and whatnot, but yet here you are showing uh, to be a warrior, or you know, such an aggressive sport. And he yeah. says, well, I'd rather be a, a warrior in the garden than the than the garden in the war, <laughs> right? Hundred percent, man. I tell you, you know, like jujitsu and. And sports and that moving forward is just going to be, you know, I mean, society's been pretty soft. It has been for a long time. You know, everyone gets a medal and it's just not realistic. You know, they're just not preparing people for for a tough life. And life doesn't matter where you are. You can be the most sheltered person in the world, but uh, you're going you're gonna to come across hard times. And if you haven't prepared uh, mentally and, and learned how to, uh, you know, just learned how to get a process to deal with hard times, um, 
it it can be you know it can be the end of you and i mean it's implemented you know it's uh, obvious in our uh, suicide statistics you know there's people out there that just haven't been taught or given uh, tools to process hard times and it's just it's it's uh, tragic you know that's all we're trying to do is just and with the kids it's very obvious the kids come through and you know they're aggressive and you know males you know predominantly men have got uh, aggression issues and we just channel that man and just turn them into great uh, you know people that give back to society and and leaders and good fathers and yeah that's all we're trying to do mate you know we're not trying to do anything that's uh, you know aggressive it's just that we use the tools that we have to pr- to make good humans mm. be the best version of yourself right exactly yeah no, and it's not all it's not all wins that's where martial arts is a good one you know uh, l- l- losing is not the end of the world you know people make out like losing you being victimized well you know that's what you need sometimes is to lose understand that you have got a weak point and you can go back and uh regroup and and plan and move forward you know so obviously you know you've you're not implementing the 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 traffic light system Mm. so what what are the authorities saying to you or what are they trying to to maximize out of you obviously this twelve thousand uh $12,000 Twelve thousand dollars a day. They're yeah. trying to find you and whatnot. Mm-hmm. But what further steps are they going to, or uh, how are you battling this uh, through through uh, the legal way? Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, to be honest, I thought that we were just going to roll it out. We were going to stand on our morals, and we were going to go out potentially. You know, we were uh, ready to do that. And um, but you know, just the amount of support, man, it's just been absolutely mind blowing. I thought we were a small minority of people that weren't uh, for segregation of society. I just thought that somehow society had been lost to <coughs> to people that were compliant on this, and uh, the amount of uh, love and support has been overwhelming. I'll be honest; it's just been amazing. But uh, you know, there's a, there's two types, there's two phases to it. I mean. <coughs> Over the Christmas break, I was reading all the messages, and you know, you do get a good, <clears throat> a good sense of man, the society's behind you. But then, on the, you know, usually it's like, hey, man, we 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 really support and love what you're doing. But then, the second part of the message is overwhelmingly s- sad. You know, uh, at a time where this our prime minister's <clears throat> celebrating her wedding, uh, you know, with all you know the high flying elite that come through and. You know, just uh, give the finger to the public that can't access their loved ones and uh, skip MIQ and all the rest of it. Um, you know, it's just uh, families have been ripped apart. You know, this has been the, probably the most saddest Christmas in New Zealand history. Mm. You know, grandparents can't access their kids. People are segregating over this issue. And it's just mind-blowing. I mean, you know, they've done a real number with the saturation of the mainstream media around uh, the segregation over, you know, vaxxers, non-vaxxers, whatever you want to call it. <coughs> um, you know, just it's just, yes, yeah, seriously sad, some situations. I'm getting old ladies that can't spend the Christmas for the first time in their lives uh, with their grandkids because they, you know, you can't get an exemption. So sometimes it's not their fault. Um, you know, of you know, some messages I've been in remission, you know, from cancer. I've had a heart attack. My doctors told me not to go near this thing, um, but now my kids are choosing not to expose the, my grandkids to me because I'm a danger to them. You know what I mean? Since when is <clears throat> a is a Christmas uh, celebration been checking your papers at the door? Mm. Okay, or you know, Uncle. Uncle Bernie over there, what's what you know, I want you to do a full bloods. I want you to do a hep C, hep A, hep B, hep C and HIV before you come over for Christmas. You know what's going on? You know what I mean? It's just this constant barricade you know, bombardment of uh t- you know Oh yeah, yeah. Take the vax, or you, you, you're not part of society, or you're some sort of unclean. It's just the campaign has just been absolutely impressive, to be honest. You know, and uh, 
I'd be honest, if, if there was people dying in the streets, you wouldn't have to put a $100 million ad campaign. They wouldn't have to tell me every time I turn the radio and they get a bloody jab, you know what I mean? They wouldn't need to just smash us into submission. They wouldn't need to threaten me with, you know, taking my livelihood off me or you know, stop me from going to cafes or, you know, uh, you know, stopping the kids from going to sport. If this was real, if there's people dying on the streets, I'd say, hey, shit's real. I need to get a vaccine. And there is risks with the vaccine, but, it, but you know, it outweighs the damage if I get this, you know, virus. But where is it? I know plenty of people that had it and they just said it's a bit of a couple of rough days. And they come out the other side, and that's with no treatment, you know. So, you know, it's just right down on the actual uh, list of priorities in, in, in society, if you actually look at it from a real pair of eyes. What's the, what's the problem in society? It's suicide. It's everyone's losing their job. It's mental health. It, these are the big, big topics, you know, uh, big ticket items right now. It's not COVID, you know, in, in, in all honesty, you know. So why don't we deal with you know, what, what's actually needed, and that's to support each other and to try and help our economy somehow. Mm -hmm. But it's right down on the list as far as the government. It's just about selling their product. Very much so, and uh, we were just talking about China before. As a lot of you know, I've lived in China, and uh, this is actually the first time I'll be talking about this, is the traffic light system there. There's actually two, only two of us in the world that have it, is New Zealand and China. And so you'd think, why do we have it, and why would China have it? And what's even worse there right now is that the green light is go, just like us, and then the yellow is uh, you get a notification on your phone and states that you have to stay home for two weeks, can't leave your home, and if you do, you get fined or jailed, depending on your social credit uh, score. On the so, yeah, social credit score is a big one, isn't it? Yeah, it's it's huge. It's uh, uh, I, I see the, the 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 VP, you know, the vaccine pa um, pass is uh, um, is a Trojan horse for that. Yes. Yeah, it starts off as you know, oh, yeah, we'll just have this, and ends up being your number. Then you, you, your number's based on even the way you cross the street. I, I'd, I'd cross the street with my friend, flash for the camera, ding, notification on his phone, fifty bucks minus off his account. Is they it? just take your money off your account just like that. Or well, your social credit score. Yeah, yeah, uh, and uh, and money as well. Money is actually it's actually and taken you off fine. you. Yeah, and you f forcibly find on on the spot. That's unbelievable, and, isn't it? And that happens within seconds of the f camera flash. Yeah, I mean that's you can see they are rolling. You know they're looking getting ready. I mean the uh, you know dig, uh, the uh, facial rec recognition, the five G. They're putting this in place so that, that everywhere you go, you'll be under surveillance and, and this is how they're going to roll it out. I mean, I've heard about the social credit system and a lot of people haven't heard of it. Yeah. You know, you need to have a look, man, because this is where we're going. Honestly, it's uh, it's scary. And everybody, you know, the, the scary thing is that, <coughs> you know, most of society thinks we're going back to normal. Yeah. They're not spending this sort of money on an infrastructure and they're just going to stop it and go back to normal, guys. We, You know, we're... we're down the path of some serious, uh, you know, dictatorship, uh, and we need to pull it back. We we really do. You know, I mean, it's, uh, you know, Liz Lambert is the one that's heading up our campaign, and she was just saying that she's uh, <coughs> had people, you know, lawyers that have studied historical law <coughs> and how they've rolled it out, how they've rolled out legislation in New Zealand, is. It's a reenactment of 1936, 1937, the way Nazis took over Germany. You know, it's uh, this. This has been played out before. This is no accident. You know what I mean? And how they've done it is they've ring fenced, they've ring fenced uh, the politicians themselves against uh, prosecution. So they aren't implementing, they aren't mandating the vaccines. They're putting it out to private business. You know, and it's it's smart because they aren't going to be held accountable at the end of the day. What what small business doesn't understand is that if you mandate this in your business, you're going to be held liable. If someone has an accident, if someone gets uh, has a stroke or has a bad reaction, you as a business are going to be liable, <coughs> potentially for the rest of the, 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 the your employee's life. It's it's unbelievable, mate. And people think they're cool rolling this out. Oh, we're going to get on board and we're going to roll it out because it's the right thing to do. Check it. Have a look, guys, and get your lawyers on the back of this because uh, once you see the reality, it's not going to be so cool, you know. Mm. It uh, really is. You know, the government's just throwing small business under the bus. Yeah, yeah. Complete control and dictatorship. And just talking about that, we uh, have the shirt here from Shinitsu. Uh, thanks to you guys. Uh, NZTN10, that's the code if you want 10% off these shirts, uh, just for I let you guys know. Here is uh, it's a business, and because... Uh, 
he's been knocked out because of, obviously because of the mandates too. So mm. that's his new business. Yeah, so, yeah I thought I'd throw that in there. But uh, <laughs> in terms of the traffic in China, we didn't get to red, and red is even crazier. Red, uh, you get a notification on your phone. The authorities come and pick you up, throw you into a, basically an MIQ for 28 days, and then uh, once obviously you have to test, you know, uh, negative and all that to get out. And then once you do get out, you have to pay that that MIQ um, 28 yeah. days within three months. And if you don't, fined or jailed as well. This and, is, that, and that's the traffic light system in China at the moment. So I, until how long it comes here, I have no idea. But we, you know, we're setting up the infrastructure. You know, this is where people just aren't getting it. They aren't putting the pieces together. They just think that oh, we can trust the government. You know, they're not. They, 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 they'd never do that. Guys, wake up, seriously. I mean, Are you sure, maybe, no. <laughs> yeah, I'd never do that, you know. <laughs> and fantasize is real, you know. Yeah. What I mean, it's mm. just un unbelievable the, the trust that people have in the government, and we're being played, we're being betrayed by our government, and you need to wake up. It's, uh, you know, now they're coming for the kids, and 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 the, and the scary thing is, with uh, Pfizer. <clears throat> Pfizer have just bought the factory for t uh, seven billion dollars. The factory that produces the uh, the medication for um, myocarditis. Unbelievable. Yeah, so they're going to give you the jab, you know, give you myocarditis, which is a you know a high on the on on the uh, you know um, bad reactions, and then once you get a, a swollen heart, then they're going to own the business that's going to give you the medication. Give you the cute. Yeah, that's it for a price. <laughs> and the price is the cure and the sickness at the same time, right? Ah, oh, unbelievable, mate. You know, corruption, it's global corruption we're dealing with and people can't put the pieces together. I mean, you've got to have a, a you know, the street smarts of a, of a primary school kid to understand that people love money and there is a conflict, there, you know, conflict of interest is a, is a reality and it's got to a stage now where it's global, you know? Well, they say money makes the world go around, right? It's crushing the world right now. It really is. It's uh, putting them in pens, and uh, you know we've got to wake up as as a people. We really do, and I I, I think it's happening, you know. But uh, you know, on the on the kids, you know, I mean that Malone, he invented the M, uh, RNA uh, technology, and he's saying, man, I'm pro vax. I'm vaxed. He says, but I'll tell you what, the kids, he says, this is, you can't take this back. Once you vaccinate your kid, you can't take this back. This is a gene therapy. Have a listen to it. Look him up. You're probably going to need to go to Rumble or DuckDuckGo or something. You're going to have to get off YouTube because I think they've banned him on all MSM, eh? Yeah, right. You know, and he, he's, the, he's the guy that engineered the, the uh, mRNA technology, you know, and they've just crushed him on all uh, mainstream networks right now. It's just, un the suppression is unbelievable. But he was just saying that uh, you can't take the lesions in, in your brain back. You can't take the myocarditis, the swollen heart. You can't take, you know, you can medicate it, but it's you're damage, ser doing serious damage to the youth and you need to fight this as hard as you can. Don't go near it. He's, he's even saying, don't go near it as kids. It's not worth it. You know? So, um, you know, in terms of obviously the, now the, for this year, for the kids to go back to school, uh, you would have to, they have to be vaccinated. And, um, 12 and over, but the, the government was saying that we're going to obviously, you know, this is what they do. It's not us. We're not implementing, but we. But it's up to the individual schools, and the schools are going to throw themselves under the under the bus, right? Mm. It's, yeah, it's going to be quite interesting how that all rolls out, and yeah. how many kids actually turn up and whatnot. And uh, obviously, the teachers they've already lost from last year during uh, the first mandate Monday, I call it, uh, yeah. on November the fifteenth. It was. Uh, you know, if it ever gets to that point where they're going to obviously, you know, try and touch your kids, uh, I think I've seen a quite a rough side of you where uh, the Woke Collective, uh, if she's watching, uh, she has a clip on Instagram saying, uh, I feel like I'm having like a scrap, you know, and I, mm. I feel like um, I don't think you're just going to let anyone try and give your uh, kids a, a medical trial treatment, would you? I don't give a shit whether they're vaccinated or not. There's no... I have no interest in it. You're not a man who's going to walk away when it gets tough. You, 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 no, you, I enjoy it, to things. be honest. You know, I've been yeah. retired 10 years and I've been looking for a good scrap for a while. So <laughs> I'm not putting my kids up for any medical tr treatment with, without you know, some evidence behind it. I mean, it's all been rushed out. This is a sad thing too. If you have a look at it, you know, um, they're saying that <clears throat> while the vaccine was under uh, emergency use, they weren't liable. You couldn't prosecute them. They have a bit of a, uh, you know, a immunity shield around prosecution. But as soon as that vaccine became, uh, it was, uh, it got the it got the tick. Then they were able to be prosecuted. You know, when it was okay, when they, uh, that uh, medication was okay, the vaccine was okay, they were able to be prosecuted. But.
as soon as uh, the vaccine is rolled out and, and, and uh, given the okay for kids, they uh, go back to not being able to be prosecuted, that immunity again. So that's the whole motivation, you know, to get the kids, give the, the, the mandate able to, you know, the vaccine able to be rolled out for kids because they get immunity. It's unbelievable, man. Honestly, you wouldn't you wouldn't dream this shit's tr uh, true, but it's this is what's happening on the back end. It's all about money. It's all about you know, uh, get, you know, making themselves immune to prosecution. It's uh, it's dark. It really is, you know. But the uh, most of the people, the community is unaware of it, and they just wouldn't believe that it's true. But it, unfortunately, it is, and we've got to pr protect our kids, man. We, we, you know, they're your kids, they're my kids. We're, we're the ones that are responsible for our kids. We can't just throw them out and, and, and believe that people have their best intentions, you know, uh, at heart because they don't. You know, it's... Um, like it's happened before, right? This has happened plenty of times before, you know what I mean? They've rolled out, uh, you know, medication without doing the homework and, and society's paid a big price, you know, but... Um, people we've had it too good for too long you know we've had a generation since world war ii where it's been the probably the best time in history and now society doesn't believe that uh people have bad intentions and and, and you know prioritize money over people's health and and unfortunately they do you know what's what's your uh what's your one message from here uh, in, in new zealand to the rest of the nation and to the rest of the world Man, we just got to stand up. We don't have to do, we don't have to, you know, kick off. You know, we don't have to do big rallies. We don't have to, they're not obviously not listening. They're not working. The rallies aren't working. But we have to, we have to just say no. No to the jab, no to the mandates. I'm not just not doing it. You know, the, the <coughs> beehive is only a small amount of people in a beehive. You know, there's a small amount of people. Uh, it's like 120. Yeah, 120 people. And these guys have got no real life experience. A lot of these guys have gone <clears throat> through the school system, gone into universities, become lecturers. No real life experience, guys. And they're telling us what to do and they've got this utopia, this dream world, uh, you know, uh, vision of where we need to go with zero emissions and they're bankrupting the country. I want to see one, I just want to see a plan, an economic plan of how they're going to get us out of this, but we don't. We haven't even had one. Mm. In two terms, we haven't even had something put forward as a, as a way out of this mess. All she does is spend. She's spending my money. She's spending your money. She's spending my grand my kids' money, my grandkids' money probably. You know what I mean? She's bankrupting the country on a on a on a bloody pipe dream. Mm. You know, of zero emissions, and we're going to do this, and we're going to eat. Uh, you know. Uh, <coughs> veggie burgers and we're not going to cook on barbecues and we're going to run uh, you know uh, electric cars it's just absolute nonsense mate it's not based in any real world uh, you know facts or figures it's just yeah it's just nonsense mate and we've got to push back and we've got to come with a plan that's actually real and got some foundation in, in, in reality you know yeah. awesome thank you so much I appreciate um, you know um, your time and, and, and just your, your thoughts on the whole situation and obviously not just uh, here in your business but from here to New Zealand to the rest of the world and what's really going on. Yeah, no, I appreciate your time, mate. You're doing a great job and uh, we just got to, you know, just as a people, you know, come together. You know, the segregation, it's all about segregating people, uh, you know, uh, putting people into cubby holes and, 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 you know, keep your mask on so, you know, the mask is just another way to stop people communicating. It's a hell of a thing trying to communicate someone with a mask. I can't even half it hear half the conversation so it's just uncomfortable so you don't do a lot of it mm. you know it's just everything has been put in place strategically to stop the communication and, and, and the, the people coming together isolate don't talk to your neighbours what kind of bullshit is that seriously don't talk to your neighbours you know it's just all put in place so okay I don't talk to my neighbour I don't work out that he's had a heart attack after he's had the vaccine man we, we, we're a community here and I, I I've got a great network, you know, I've been in the community my whole life and grown a, a, a serious network. And, mate, there's something going very, very, very wrong with this vaccine. You know, it's just not hitting the mainstream because, uh, you know, they've been bought, their silence has been bought, unfortunately. You know, and there's a lot of people out there that, I don't know how they sleep straight at night, because they're selling their people out, you know. They're selling their people out, mate. You know, they're, they're not telling the truth and they're fudging the numbers. 
and uh, it will come out. It will come out. You can't hold this down. And I mean, you know, New Zealand's only a, 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 it's a, a two degree of separation. New Zealand's too small. It's going to come out, and when it does, there's going to be a lot of pissed off people. You've used our people as a as an experiment. You've uh, suppressed the real issues and what's going on, and. Um, yeah, it's only a matter of time, and now they're coming for the booster, they're coming for our kids, you know, it's not going to be long before there's a real pushback, and I feel it, it's going to be this year. Funny that you say, you know, a uh, small nation, but um, I think I also believe when a small fire starts in a, in a small bush, it burns a lot quicker than a big bush, doesn't it? Well, New Zealand is, is, is built, we were the last bastions of, of uh, you know, uh, the Europeans coming down and the Maldives, you know, it was a, a absolute war zone down here and, uh, you know, it took a tough people to come down and to uh, make a life down here. And we have, you know, the Maldives are, you know, a people full of mana and uh, they're finding their mana again. There's a, a small percentage in every demographic that are selling their people out. They're the ones making the money at the top of the food chain and everyone else is paying the price or will pay the price. Um... But, yeah, I have a lot of faith in our people uh, finding their mana again and finding their voice, and uh, it's exciting. Mm. There's a saying in Italian, uh, we say, the testa de la pesce puzza, which means the head of the fish stinks. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Yeah, mate, big time, right? And it's obvious, more and more obvious as time goes by. But unfortunately, a lot of people trust their leadership, and um, we've got to question everything. We really do, because our leaders have been bought and paid for and um, it's uh, it's it's te it's tragic you know what I mean but uh, it is what it is we've got to uh, you know acknowledge that and we've got to do something about it thanks so much awesome mate thanks for your time brother kakite ciao what's up I'm Terrell I'm Bingaluie